night, New Year's Eve. It's about 55 degrees out, no snow. Let's go check on the Axis and the Adventure. Yeah, they're still in the, in the trailer. Yeah, let's get them in the garage. They've been sitting in here way too long. Should probably get these all set and ready, do the maintenance on them, because these are the ones I'm actually gonna ride. All right, let's go in the garage. See how we're doing for room. All right, just gotta get Karen's bike out of here. So we gotta move the XC, clean up a little bit. Yeah, let's get those in here. You know what, screw it. Those can weigh a little bit longer. Let's, let's go buy another sled. So we're heading over to my dad's to get my single place trailer, AKA the uh, dead sled recovery unit. Um, I picked up this trailer uh, this year. Before that, I had a little caravan steel place trailer. But uh, you know what? This single place trailer works great for when you're going to buy sleds. Uh, it's very handy to have because uh, in the event that you're picking up a sled and it's in an inaccessible area, you just grab the single place and you just roll up to it and then you go get it and you're done. So let's go get a single place. It's in a little quarter shed and let's hook up and let's go get it. All right, we are loaded and ready to rock and roll. All right, so we're off to get this sled. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, uh, but see if you, see if you, uh, if you guys can guess what it is, all right? So the first thing I'll tell you is it's not a wedge, right? Um, it is a product of the 2000s. So this sled, along with its big brother, is probably known best for engine failures right um, and the reason is is because of a platform change right and it's not because it's a bad engine design it's because of the way it was situated in this particular platform uh, what I will say is the engine that we're talking about is still in use today but when it was in this particular chassis, there was nothing but failures. And there's a good reason for it. So what we'll do is, we're gonna go pick up this sled. I'm probably not gonna be able to film it while I'm there. Just out of respect of privacy of the, uh, the, the current owner. But what we'll do is, once we get it back to the house, uh, we'll explain what it is and why this engine along with its bigger brother, had so many failures, all right? So let's go get the sled and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so here we go. Here it is. Did anybody guess uh, correctly? Kudos uh, if you did, all right. So this is a 2001 XCF 440. And this sled actually <laughs> marks of uh, the beginning of a lot of of a lot of bad times with Polaris in 2000 uh, and up. Uh, basically, Polaris went through a lot of shit for about 10 years and it, it kind of started with this sled, right? Um, so, the, uh, so this sled, if you don't uh, familiar with it, has the new, well, new, uh, Case Reed, uh, fan cool twin, right? So the 440 is basically the little brother of the 550. 
So this engine was designed to replace the Bulletproof 488, 440, 340, right? And um, they put it in the, the, the new edge chassis. It moved away from the Gen 2 and the, and the wedge, right? So uh, what happened was Polaris had a lot of issues with this engine, right? So as far as the sled, this is actually a pretty cool sled. It's just got a shitty engine in it. And so it's, you know, it's got the clear racing tank on it. It's got a performance brake on it right it's not your standard indie brake it's got a nice brake on it it's got the elevated steering post which is promotes more of a stand-up riding style the rear skid has a uh, clicker shock in the back it's got uh cooling for the brake uh caliper and a lot of cool features on, on this sled but again so the problem is it's got a shitty engine and uh, it's really not well let me rephrase that it's got a decent engine in a bad chassis. And the reason I say that, I'll explain in a minute. So, but first, first and foremost, um, when people say, oh, this is a case read engine, it is. But these are the reeds that are actually in the engine. They're tiny. They're not located in the, in the traditional place where you would think uh, behind the car boots. They're, they're actually, they uh, sit on top of the case half where the cylinder comes on top of it and basically they actually sit horizontal to the carbs in case nobody ever had one of these apart that's actually how big those reeds are they're tiny right so what was the issue with these engines right um they would have uh lean uh burn downs on either cylinder and people would say uh as long as you rode it like you stole it they ran great, but if you rode it slow, uh, the slow to mid speeds, you would have an issue where they would uh, they would burn down, right? Polaris realized this, and they came up with a bunch of updates over the course of three or four years when it was in the edge chassis, and then um, it really never fixed the problem, right? So then the edge chassis was around for four or five years. Then the IQ came around, and then uh, uh, we all know about the IQ shift. That was a pretty good uh, uh, setup for the 550, and now Polaris is offering the 550 in the ProRide chassis, and that's what's in that Evo, right? But one is probably going to say, well, what, what's the issue with these sleds? Why do they have a lean burn down? Why, wh why, right? So let's take a look at a wedge hood in comparison to an edge hood, right? So if we look at the wedge hood, right? And this is one off a Indie Sport that had a fan cooled sled in it. If we look, everybody's familiar with the, the, the wet, the, the vents in the front, they're just massive, they're huge. And then over on the right hand side of the hood, we have a, a huge vent that's running pretty much 50% uh, of the hood, right? And there's a lot of surface area for heat to escape. And then over on the back side, we have two holes in the hood on either side for venting. And then we have the intake up at the normal uh, location. But also, also over on the left-hand side, right, we also have the vents uh, that are present on those on these hoods. But on the fan cool side they're actually, they're knocked out, right? On a liquid, they're actually solid, right? So if you look, this this hood is just, it's full of holes, it's very well ventilated, right? So keep that in mind as we compare it to the edge hood, right? So on the edge hood, we have a couple large vents up front, then we have a couple tiny ones, and then you have a couple tiny ones over by the headlight, and then over on the right hand side of the hood, you have a small vent right there. Over by the knees, right over on the right hand side, you have a small vent, it's relatively closed off. And then over on the left hand side, you have additional venting and they're very narrow, they're very small. 
and the way they're shaped, they're not conducive for actually heat escaping, right? The, the, the top edge of the vent actually goes over itself. So this is not a good design, right? Then over where the, uh, the, the hot air actually exhausts from the engine, it comes through here. This is one issue with these sleds, because if you actually reach in to this crevice, that's where the duct for the fan exists. But the problem is, the width of the duct is about that wide, right? And this vent is vertical. It's not horizontal. So what happens is, when you close the hood, the, act, the duct is actually restricted, right? So if you stick your hand in here, you can actually feel the duct exists right about here. So what happens is when the sled is running at slow to medium speeds, there's not a lot of air exchange in underneath the hood. So what happens is the engine's running hotter, it's running hot, hotter, the air has nowhere to escape. So it's basically, it's building up, it's building up, and then it goes right into the intake where the air box exists. So the engine gets hotter, it gets hotter, it gets hotter, and then it overheats and then you have a burn down, right? This is a common issue because another, another venting option on the fan cool sleds, players would actually have vents on the belly pan and um, it would also help to escape heat. So if we look under the hood, right? The exhaust on the 440 is not that bad. It's actually, it's it's up pretty high and it's back from the the actual air intake of the engine, right? This is not that bad. This is where it should be. On the 550s, if you ever look at it, the exhaust is very low and it's right up against the, uh, the bulkhead. It's probably like an inch away, right? So Polaris realized the issues that they were having and they made a bunch of changes. They relocated the uh, the uh, oil pump to on top of the air box. They made a, a bleeder kit. They nicosilled the uh, the cylinders to make them a little bit more durable, I guess. And uh, But by the time they figured that out, it was the end of the, the production run for the Edge. That's when the IQ came out and they kind of fixed all the issues. So, if you ever see an edge with a 550 in it, chances are it's probably been rebuilt once or twice, maybe three times. And um, <clears throat> so the problem with the 440, and so we picked this up, like I said, as a non-runner. The 440 has a bad piston in it. On the Magneto side, we're at 95 and 125 on the PTO. The problem with the 440 is... Uh, this is kind of a unicorn of a sled in the sense that Polaris only had a production run uh, on the 440 uh, for two or three years, uh, from 2000 to 2003, maybe 2004, and then they just ceased production of it. They realized all the issues that they were having, and they just basically swapped over to the 550. As a result, nobody makes replacement pistons for the 440. There, there's just nothing available. So if you, have an, if you ever have an issue like this, you have to basically find somebody on eBay that's uh, tearing the engine down. There are no aftermarket offerings for replacement pistons on these sleds. So the, there's only one thing you can really do is, um, so the 440 and the 550 share the same common uh, lower end, case halves, uh, CDI, Stator, Magneto, stuff like that. So you can do a 550 swap where you put the uh, the jugs and the pistons and the head on and uh, go from there. But you you can you can do all that. But at the end of the day, you're you know you still need to address the root issue and it's really heat management of the 550 and the uh, the edge chassis. And uh, unfortunately, what we've decided to do, we're going to part this sled out and kind of go with the same route of the Indy 500 that we did. It's not really uh, much we can do. And it's kind of a shame because this sled, like I said, it's, it's kind of unique 
in the features that it has. It only has 2,000 miles on it. But again, if you can't get parts for it and you, you still don't address the issue that you're, you're having with it, it's kind of a waste of money. And uh, I don't think it's a good investment. If there's any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and leave them in the comments box. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day. See ya.